In today's video, I'm going to talk about the similarities between LeBron and Luka, criticisms of Luka that I agree with, a criticism that I disagree with, and the path Luka needs to take to guarantee himself a chance at a championship every single season. I made this video partly because of two reasons. One, I just watched Luka score 53 points in a dogfight just to beat the Pistons, and two, a report came out in an ESPN article that sources are hearing Luka, who hasn't shown a desire to be involved in roster decisions in the past, has strongly indicated he wanted the Mavs to upgrade before the February 9th trade deadline. The biggest on-court similarity between LeBron and Luka is that they are both wing players that can lead elite offenses by exploiting defenses with their dribble. They're the main ones that get to dictate how their team's offense is going to score that night. I understand the criticism about the heliocentric style of play. It is harder to win with as you get deeper into the postseason, and not everybody on the team is going to be in rhythm when you watch one guy dribble and score the ball. It's not easy to stay in rhythm playing next to a dominant ball handler because you have to be almost perfect. The role player next to Luka or LeBron gets around one and a half seconds to make the right play after the defense collapses, and that's not always easy after you didn't touch the ball for three minutes. Luka's style of play can lead to a ring. There's a championship model here, but he does eventually need to drop his usage a tad to accommodate a slightly different style, and you know what will get Luka to change? The Mavs continuing to lose. This Mavs team is fourth in the West somehow, but they're probably going to have an early playoff exit unless something significant changes. Losing will help Luka realize things. It's happened to a lot of the greats. LeBron slightly changed his play style in Miami. He played more in the post to get cleaner looks at the basket. He improved his mid-range shot and was even more committed on defense. Dwayne Wade allowed LeBron to be the first option. To go back farther in the past, Michael Jordan went from a 38% usage rate in his third year to a 33% usage rate in his first championship year. Jordan started trusting Phil Jackson and his teammates more. He played a little bit more off the ball and let other guys create for themselves. We've never seen anyone win a championship with a usage rate as high as Luka's. It's currently at 38%. Variety in the Mavs offense is going to be needed eventually because you only get to a usage rate like Luka's is when either you don't have faith in your teammates or your roster is not good. There's three criticisms of Luka that I'm definitely on board with. One of them is his moodiness as the team's best player. It's not great. Luka runs hot and cold, and what I mean by that is when it's going good, when the Mavs are running teams out of the gym, he's hitting step back threes over good defense, he's finding wide open shooters, he's doing a defensive back backpedal smiling at the crowd, everybody is tweeting Luka magic, it's all good and fun. But we've seen him run cold, he's openly moody when things aren't going well for the Mavs, he slow jogs down the court with his head down, We've seen him pout and whine to the refs after he believed he got fouled, and then seven seconds later he has a defensive breakdown. I remember a game against the Minnesota Timberwolves in December where Jaden McDaniels had Luka in prison, and Luka's frustration seeped into the Mavs team offense. They looked out of sorts and made several mental mistakes that lost them the game. The second one is his defense is really not that great. He can be average to decent at times because of his height and physical strength, but his attention to detail on defense is lacking. And the third one is, from what we know, he is too trusting of the Mavs front office. I don't blame him for just wanting to walk into the arena and hoop, but eventually he can't sit and wait for that Hall of Famer and hope the Mavs front office do the right thing. LeBron might be the best ever, but he hasn't done it without Hall of Famers and committed role players next to him. He was able to rack up this success partly by moving pieces in the background. He proactively made it so that he was in the championship discussion every year after 2010. He made the big three in Miami, then he left four years later at the perfect time to team up with a rising guard in Kyrie. He was able to move pieces around to get Kevin Love. He strong-armed Anthony Davis out of New Orleans. LeBron figured out by 2008, okay, I trusted the Cavs front office for this long, I'll give them a few more years, and if they don't deliver, I'm out. It might take a few years, but if Luka wants to follow the LeBron model on the court, the heliocentric style of offense, I get the ball at the top and manipulate the defense to find open shooters. He needs to kind of follow it off the court too, and that means recruiting some of the best players in the league and trying to get in on these relationships. We haven't seen Luka do any of that, and that's fine, but in the modern NBA, that's been the model for a lot of teams that won or almost won. Steph and KD in Golden State, Chris Paul and James Harden in Houston, KD Harden and Kyrie in Brooklyn, CP3 and Booker. Obviously different circumstances with Luka, but you get what I'm saying. There might be a time where Luka may have to strong arm the Mavs, maybe not this season, but in the next two to three years, he needs to find his co-star. I will add more context to this discussion, but just on the surface, Luka had two co-stars in Jalen Brunson and Kristaps Porzingis, and he went 0 for 2. 
There's no bad blood with either of those guys, but the on-court relationship with Luka and Porzingis was rigid even when Porzingis was healthy. The Brunson and Luka combo was actually good. Luka let Brunson cook when he wanted, and they made the West Finals. But why did Jalen Brunson want to leave in free agency? That's a guy you want to keep and should be convincing you gotta stay. I'm sure Brunson in his decision of leaving or staying, a small part of him was saying to himself, if I leave, I can do more on offense if I get the ball more, and he's proving that in New York. To be fair, Brunson had one foot out of the door his last year in Dallas, and they messed up by not giving him that first extension. The front office then tried to use Brunson as a trade asset to get Luka a co-star, but realized a little too late that Brunson was the guy they were looking for the whole time. But again, to be fair to Luka, what has the Mavs front office really done in the last five years? Their two best moves was drafting Jalen Brunson and Luka Doncic, and Brunson is gone and they have nothing to show for it. Luka is not in a situation where the Mavs drafted a co-star as good as Jalen Brown for him to grow with. He's not in a situation where the Mavs were able to draft someone as good as Klay Thompson or Draymond Green for him to grow with. I really hope that Luka publicly denying that report of him, demanding roster moves before the deadline, is just him lying and he's not just sitting on his hands. I'm not saying he needs to go full LeBron, that's probably not his personality, but eventually he's going to have to make a move. I understand that it's probably easier if you grew up in the AAU circuit, played on Team USA, there's no top 30 NBA player on the Slovenian national team for Luka to scheme with. It would be hilarious if the Mavs traded for Kyrie after this video is made. I understand why you'd be skeptical of bringing in someone who's been unreliable, but Kyrie is going to be the best player available for the Mavs this year probably. If Luka wants to play this heliocentric style similar to LeBron, where he gets to play in isolation, run pick and roll, and find shooters, Luka has to connect with the right role players who are going to buy into what he sells, and it doesn't have to be guys he recruited. In LeBron's early years, he had Daniel Gibson, Anderson Verjean, and other guys bought in. In Miami, he had Mike Miller, Ray Allen, and Shane Battier bought in. When the Cavs came to LeBron and said, hey, we have a trade for J.R. Smith and Amon Shumpert, but before we do it, we want to know. Do you think you can get these guys to buy in? LeBron said, just bring them in and I'll take care of it. When the Cavs lost a random regular season game in 2017, LeBron was complaining about the lack of playmakers on the team. Then a few weeks later, the Cavs bring in Kyle Korver and Darren Williams. I see a lot of debate about who would you rather have at the age of 23, LeBron or Luka? It's kind of close. I'm taking LeBron, but it's hard to compare when you consider how much space Luka gets to work with compared to LeBron in 2009. What Luka does do better than LeBron at his age is the in-between game, creating in the space below the three-point line but outside the restricted area. Luka has a better mid-range shot, Luka is better at sealing defenders after backing them down. LeBron did improve his mid-range but it was not his go-to move, it was more of a last resort if defenses corralled the paint. LeBron also wasn't an effective post-up player at 23, he was a little stiff with his footwork, Luka is very comfortable in the post and that's just the difference of how they grew up practicing the game. LeBron obviously was a better athlete, better at scoring in the paint, and he could guard his matchup on defense. So what's the point of this video? I just don't think there's anything wrong with trying to move the pieces on the chessboard as the best player, even if it bothers a segment of fans and media. If you win a championship, no one cares. Unless something drastically changes, I think Luka's current faith in the Mavs front office will hurt him in the long run. Again, maybe this might not matter. Maybe the Mavs front office will find the right role guys on the margins, find the right second star, and this video will look really dumb. But if you look at the Mavs history lately, it's hard to trust them. One last thing I will say, I think the Luka and LeBron style of offense is fine when it's someone like those two guys. Where people lose me with the, oh, there needs to be more balance on offense, more off-ball movement, more passing. Teams like the 2014 Spurs and the Steph Warriors are the exception. You can't just say, oh, let's play like the Spurs when you have a roster of players that are mediocre passers and screen setters. That takes years of development. Sometimes the best way of going about offense is letting your best player dictate it. And that's it for me. Luka has a heel injury, so the Mavs might go into free fall over the next week. I just wanted to give my opinion on can the Luka Ball style win a championship. I think it can. He just needs to make some slight adjustments on the margins, get in better shape physically, and have a slightly better roster. Appreciate it if you made it to the end. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in my next one.